now that we have the center lines marked for our, that correspond with our radius, we have our pipe marked to where we want that to be cut at. And now we can just keep it inside those uh, the Sharpie lines that I have. And we're just gonna rotate this to correspond with the line that I have drawn on the table. And we're gonna just make sure that it's evenly spaced all the way down and line that up with the mark. And then we can just bring that mark over. And now we have a nice cut line that goes from the center line of the radius outwards. And it's gonna keep your pipe rotating nice. If you cut it like this, you can twist these pipes any way you want it to go. And it'll look, if you polish the pipe out, it'll look like it was a bent piece. So now we're gonna cut this. It's something you don't want. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sportster. So now we can check our cut angle and we can hold this up. I actually need to get this down and we're pretty friggin' close. And as you can see, there's a nice smooth transition from the radius to the straight, which is something we really like. That's what we're shooting for. Cause then you can, you can turn this any which way and it's going to look right. And that transition is still going to be smooth. So now we have to figure out how much to remove from this tube. So we're gonna hold this up and we might wanna just actually put a straight on here to make sure that we don't go too tall and try to eyeball that, lining that up. And that looks pretty good. Maybe we need to go a little taller. You can always remove a little bit more this side of the line because I don't want to cut off too much. Anytime you're cutting a straight pipe, it's real easy because you're just cutting at 90 degrees. And I'm going to, when you're taking this tube on and off the frame a bunch, it's nice to set the orientation somewhere so it bolts on in the same spot. So I just cut the 45 a little bit to raise the pipe up so that these two fit together nicely. I got it fit into my clamp where I want this to mount at and instead of having to hold all this stuff while I tack it, pretty much everybody's got one of these flat jacks and if you don't have one you should go get one because they're super handy. Not even just for jacking up your bike but for working on it like making exhaust pipes because I usually like to use these just to hold it somewhere else Sometimes I'll even level the pipes in the back and then you can even like have the frame level and level the pipes left to right if it's like a British bike or an XS or whatever else you're working on. But they're really handy for making exhaust pipes. If you don't have like a V block like this, you could use a block of wood or something. This is just what I have. So I'm gonna use that and then I'm going to fit these together and you can get one of these tacked and still kind of wiggle it around. But I really wanna, before I get going, I want to make sure that this thing's going to stay parallel with the frame. Because that's going to be one of the harder things to change. This looks pretty good there. And once I get this fit up, I'm going to put a light tack on it before we continue on. And when you're fitting these up before you tack, it's a really good idea to try to make sure that the two pipes are concentric to each other and that you're not having a big gap on one side or uh, too much material hanging over the other side. You just want to make sure that you get them nice and centered. Okay, I got one tack on there holding this on. 
slightly twist this. And when you're doing this, also make sure your shifter's right here. On an early sports shirt, it's on the right side. On later, it's going to be your break, but either way, both of them go down. So you want to make sure that you got enough play where you're not going to hit that when you try to downshift. Talk. So I tighten this down and so the front pipe is, the front half of this front pipe is pretty well stout on the bike. Now I'm going to add the length to get us to where we're going to start bending up for the up sweeps. And so I have to remove all this material because you don't really want to add a length of straight into a piece that already has a length of straight because it's going to be really hard for you to line these two pieces up properly. And especially if you get them chromed or something, your lines aren't going to look right. So it's really your best bet to add the straight out of a curve. So if you need anything longer, like what we're going to use with the up sweeps, we picked up a couple longer pieces from our local metal store. But because if you're going to want to add two pieces like this together, it's really going to be hard for you to blend this out with it looking nice chromed. The chrome will really focus on that seam right in the middle. It'll be really hard to get that super smooth. Not saying it can't be done, but it's going to be more difficult than if you just start with the length of piece that you need. So we're going to cut this excess straight off of this bend and be using the bend only and then weld the straight onto it. So let's hold this up and figure out, I think we're going to just be going right to the end of the bend. So let's just do that. You can actually see, I'll show you with the fixture or the drawing that I made on the table. You're gonna, we're just gonna be cutting all the straight off of it. Just like I showed you before, we line it up so that all the bends are centered in the marks that we made on the table. And then, so you just kind of wiggle this into place. And then now I see this is where it goes straight. So I'm actually just going to mark this as my cut line. So you can also use a straight edge, just going across and then seeing where the tube starts to pull away from the straight edge and that's going to be where the straight starts. So you can see right there where it starts to pull away and that's where the straight begins and the curve ends. So we're going to be cutting all this off and welding the other long straight to it. Don't be afraid by your cuts not being super perfect. As long as you try to follow this method as best you can, your pipe should look pretty good. And since the Sharpie line's real thick, I like to favor one side and not actually cut down the direct center of the Sharpie line.
So as I showed you before, these flat jacks are super useful when you're fabricating your exhaust. As you can see, I'm using one in the front to get me on the same height as the pipe that's already mounted to the bike. And then I used another one in the back with another V-block that I had to put it level with the frame like we were talking about. And then I also angled it on the bike so that when I go to mount the rear portion of my pipe, that this part will be parallel with the frame rails and then still meet up with this tube that comes out from the front. We're going to mount that next. And as of right now, I wanna get that all tacked up so it'll be nice and sturdy so we can move forward with the rest of the exhaust. When you're welding up your exhaust, I suggest that you tack the spots that are touching first and then deal with any gaps after that. And if you have any kind of like sometimes when, especially in the bends, the tubes sometimes will get oval. And if that's the case, I always try to put the error on the outside rather than the inside, just because it's easier to blend out in the end. So I'm gonna tack this at the top because I have absolutely no gap up top. And I have a little bit of gap on the bottom, but that's okay. So I could probably take this off now. Uh, I grabbed a slightly thicker rod because I have a little bit of a gap at the bottom. That's nice and sturdy. Now we're to that point. And I think it's pretty safe to say I like where that's mounted up top. So I'm actually, I haven't tacked the flange onto the pipe yet. So I'm actually going to tack that on. So now to remove this, I'm gonna actually have to remove the clamp and this clamp to take this pipe off. Let's get this tacked on. That should be good. Okay, so now that we have that fit up and you just wanna make sure that this bottom edge line still sits where you want it to go. Maybe I might just crank that up just a hair. Okay, that looks good. That looks really good. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be using one of these 45s to create the upsweep. And I would like that to wrap around the spring of the kicker. So I'm just going to hold this up and I also wanna keep the lines nice. Everything on the frame and the bottom of the oil tank and the lower fender mount all seem to be parallel to each other. So I really wanna keep that line. So we're gonna to try to just kinda of aim this at that and keep that line going. My pad's in the way. I think about right there. And like I showed you before, you can kind of see where these lines meet. You have this one coming down and the curve wrapping around and visualize the edge of the bottom and where those two meet and it starts to pull away, that's where you're gonna put your line. And then we're going to check that against the gauge. So if you have a tube that doesn't match up with the radius that you drew on the table and say you're only making one cut and you don't wanna to have to draw all this out, another really easy way to figure out where you need to cut from 
is say first grab a straight edge that can stay fixed on the table and isn't gonna get knocked around easy. And if you just take your tube and you set it on the table and you figure out the center point and we already marked where the line was going to be, uh, where we were gonna cut from straight up and down versus this angle shooting to the back. So we're gonna put that on the center and we're gonna make it only that tip touching the table. And then we're gonna put our straight edge. So we're going like, uh, so you're gonna make the gaps equal on either side. Uh, maybe not the angle shooting up, but the gaps in the radius equal on either side. Don't worry about the tubes coming up, but just so you can tell that the, where you're trying to cut is actually the part touching the table. So then we're working off of that center line to it being vertical. And then we can actually just take our straight edge and work off of that line and draw to make the cut. Make sure that it's straight up and down. And I drew pretty good when I had it on here. And that's where we need to cut at. After you do this for a while, you can almost kind of see it. So now that we have this cut, we're going to figure out where to cut this piece. And I think right here. So I just got this piece cut and then I tacked one of the straights to it just so I can line up my angles when I tack this on to make sure, actually it was just kind of like uh, for inspection purposes to make sure that I had this cut at least pretty close because we are going to be cutting this again because I only want the bend out of it. And so I can actually uh, get the angle a little bit closer because I just need to drop this just a hair when I cut the next piece, but it looks, I just wanted to visually inspect to make sure that when we tack this back on, that I'm not too close to the frame or too far away, just to be able to line up the rest of the pipe going backwards. So I'm gonna use that and line everything up and get some good gaps going, and we're gonna tack this on. That looks good enough to me. Grounded. And now we can actually kind of step back and those look pretty cool. I'm getting, I'm digging how these pipes are turning out. Like I said before, I need to relax the, the bend just a hair. It's not exactly parallel with the frame. It doesn't have to be, it's really up to you, but that's what, that's the look I was going for was I wanted the pipes and the uh, back of the frame rails to be parallel with each other. So like I said before, I would like the this part of the tube to match this part of the frame to be parallel with each other. 
I need to figure out what angle I need to cut this at to make that tube parallel to it. So I'm gonna be using my angle finder. You can zero this out in any position. I'm gonna put this on the exhaust in the spot that I'm going to keep and I just zeroed it out. So now I'm gonna use that angle of that part of the exhaust as my baseline. And now I'm gonna move this exhaust to my frame rail to figure out what the difference of the angle is between the two. So we're at 24.8. So now I'm gonna move this to the table. I'm gonna zero out the table and I'm gonna set this at 24.8 and then mark my cut line using my straight edge just as before. Okay, like I said before, I'm zero into the table. Zero that out and I'm gonna move it to my part on the exhaust. And I also marked the top of the exhaust while it was on the bike so that I have that perfectly vertical when I move to the table. Let the marker go. So now I'm going to set this at 24.8. Could be a little tricky. This pipe's a little big. Hopefully you got some chopper buddies to help you hold this. And just like before, we're gonna go right off the center. And we're gonna mark that. And that should give us the angle that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Okay, I got the front pipe bolting in again. Now the moment of truth, let's see how this goes. All right, yeah, that looks pretty good. Almost like a professional. Oh! Make sure you're centered on the pipe every time. There we go. I want this to pull out just a little bit, so I'm gonna just lightly heat this tack. Hopefully it doesn't fall. There we go. That looks better. It's gonna sag a little bit. There, we're gonna cut some of this off. I'm not gonna leave that that long, but it's a good start. It also helps you keep the lines parallel if you got a long tube. So I think we're gonna get started on the back pipe. Okay, so now I'm getting the rear pipe all fit up and I wanted to start with reusing like the rest of my bend that I already cut up because it is actually kind of close. So I'm gonna put the straight into the port and kind of mock that up just getting this bend laid out. And this part, you're gonna kind of have to eyeball if you're gonna do it like this. It'd be easier once you cut off enough to where you could get it into the exhaust port and clear the kicker pedal so that you could actually take some measurements and hold up some other things to figure it out to see where you want this to go. So I'm kind of just gonna eyeball this at first and cut this off, giving me enough that it'll still fit in here with the kicker pedal on. So I got to fit up, but clearly I didn't, I left it a little too long and 
I'm really not liking how that's looking. Let's see, I'm gonna cut a lot more off of it. Don't worry, there's a lot of back and forth with uh, getting these things laid out. I do this kind of thing all the time where I'm just taking off a little bit, tweaking it a little bit more, because a lot of this is just eyeball and how you like it to look. Aside from cutting it straight, like if it's a pizza pie, there, this, it's all kind of up to you to lay it out to what looks best for the bike that you're building. So it might be, I don't know, trim a little bit, twist it, trim it a little bit, a lot of back and forth. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I cut this down a couple times and so now I'm liking how the bend's coming out of the exhaust port, how it, it doesn't start right away, but uh, it starts soon after it comes out of the head. I need to add a little bit more to straight to this just to move this out a little bit so that when we angle this upwards in the upsweep that these pipes are actually parallel to each other. So I'm going to add a little bit of straight and then try to continue with the curve going back. So I'm going to figure out where I'm going to cut it from. So here's, we got a straight, and it's kind of the same as before. If when you hold the pipe up and you line up the edges, you have the edge coming up of the radius here and the edge coming up of the radius there. And what angle you're holding this tube at, you see the center line here. So wherever you put that center line and mark it, as I showed you before, that's going to be for the angle that you're holding the tube at. So if you marked that and cut it, your tube would fit in to the end of it in that same angle that you're holding it up as. So I think, so as you can see, I'm just looking at the edges of the tube and I like the angle where it's coming back. So now I'm gonna mark it right there. And so that's where I wanna cut. So I'm going to move this to the table and center this area so that these gaps are even off the top of the table and then mark it with my straight edge and I'm going to cut it along that line just as I showed you before. So you can see where this is rolling. You can see the radius sticking up on both sides. When I'm talking about that, that's how I'm visualizing it as I roll this straight when this is actually fixed to the head and I'm rolling this part around on it. This is a good way to actually visualize it because then all I need to do is see how I have it marked here in the center. I put that if it's in the center at the very top of this tube. So when I cut that, that's how it's going to line up. So I have this kind of mocked up to where it's going to go. I need to shorten this so it'll clear the kicker arm and then I could probably get a better measurement of what needs to be. So I'm just going to cut this shorter just like before. I might have to cut it a few times. So it might be a little back and forth, but let's go get this cut. Okay, I like the angle of this right now. I just gotta cut this back so maybe I can get a little bit better idea of the cut I need for the up sweep. So I'm, I might just make a rough cut just to get this excess out of the way so I can rotate it around and actually find my sweet spot. So I feel like that. 
I'm definitely not going to use all that. Okay, now I kind of have to try to figure out how to eyeball to tack this to the head pipe without get it too close to that. So if you can kind of try to center that bend right over top the other one, because we still wanted the pipe to be parallel going back, because it's got to be, it's going to be pretty close to the edge of the frame. I think that looks pretty good. I got to get my welding hood. put a little tack to keep that from rotating. That thing's wiggling around on me. A little tiny little tack just to keep that from rotating. So I need to figure out where to cut this to line up my, the rest of my rear pipe. And so I'm going to use the same trick as before, just by zeroing stuff out using this little angle finder. And I want to match the angle, clearly want everything parallel. So I'm going to tack this on, but it seems like I need to, I'm, I need to cut this and just roll these pieces from each other just a couple degrees because for whatever reason, my rear pipe just, uh, it's, it, it's coming out at an angle and not staying parallel with the bike. How to fix that, I'm going to cut this and roll this tube up just a hair and then roll this tube down so it actually points the rear part of the exhaust in towards the bike because it's coming out at an angle, like, uh, not this extreme, but it's coming out at an angle and we want to leave things parallel. So I just need to make an adjustment, but I think this is going to work. So I'm going to roll with that for now and I'm going to tack that on. As you can see, the angle's off just a little bit. I'm gonna try to try to twist this to get it to where I needed it to go. It's so close. It just needs that little bit of roll out. So I think if I twist these pieces with each other, it'll make this a little bit closer to where we'll be able to get this straightened out. But it's really close. Okay, let's give that a shot. I'm gonna cut this joint.
That looks pretty good. So as you just saw, I had to cut this joint apart and rotated it just a bit so that the pipe was parallel with the other pipe in the rear part of the motorcycle. So it wasn't coming out at an angle, which it was before. So I did that and then I used the angle finder again to match the angle so that the exhaust, the frame, all of that is gonna stay parallel. And this is a super useful tool for doing something like that. Now the only thing left to do with the exhaust, clearly besides weld it up, I still have to mount it in the rear before I get to that point. And the plan is to use a couple tabs off the bottom of the exhaust. I'm gonna mount one to the axle plate and probably maybe one off the frame, depending on how short we cut it, and then maybe another in the off the sissy bar in the back. But we still have to cut this down to length, which we might do next and then mount it, or we'll see how it goes. But the next step is gonna to be to mount the exhaust.